Online. I'm Nicola Kelly. Today's top stories. On your marks, set, strike. Unions threaten the games. I don't think they back this claim to disrupt the Olympics. Why this Winchester couple want the right to get married. There'll be petitions, there'll be riots. Local music producer heads for the charts. Pretty flabbergasted, I suppose. And in sport, goals galore for Winchester. Winchester City Council, George Beckett, has announced that he is stepping down from his role to run for the new post of Hampshire Police Commissioner. Our local government correspondent, Phyllis T. Houston, has been following the latest developments. Conservative George Beckett has been an ever-present figure in local politics for the last decade, but after four years as council leader, he's moving on. However, Councillor Beckett won't have it all his own way. Other politicians have already thrown their hats into the ring. Councillor Jackie Raymond from Southampton City Council and Councillor Mel Kendall from Hampshire County Council have expressed their interest in the role. No, okay. yeah. Trade unions are once again in dispute with the coalition government. Unite General Secretary Len McCluskey wants union members to strike during their Olympic Games this summer, which has outraged politicians. Lewis O'Brien has this story. The Olympic Games in London are still 141 days away. The event, which will see millions descend to the capital to celebrate the Games. But the threat of a national strike that would cause disruption during the event has sparked a political debate. The claims made by Unite General Secretary Len McCluskey has seen him call on the general public to take part in an act of civil disobedience. For one Hampshire MP, these claims are unpatriotic and have gone too far. Thousands of Unite members across Winchester and across the South are excited about the Olympics as we are excited about the Olympics and of course they have their beef with the government and of course they want to make their protest but I don't think they back this claim to disrupt the Olympics and the civil disobedience about what is one of the biggest and most exciting events to come to this country in a generation. The argument has come after a year of conflict between the coalition government and the trade unions over the changes in pension reforms which saw a nationwide strike on November the 30th last year. can't just see this as a new thing or something that is unpatriotic and by the way the unpatriotic um, comments, I think, is a bit rich coming from a government that supports employment laws that allows employers to leave this country um, and invest elsewhere, putting um, thousands of UK workers um, on the dole. A week can be a long time in British politics, but with the Olympics drawing ever closer, a nationwide protest is something that the coalition government does not need to face. Lewis O'Brien, Winchester News Online, Westminster. A gay couple from Winchester have voiced their anger after an article published by a Scottish cardinal compared to the idea of same-sex marriage to the slave trade. Keith O'Brien's comments on Radio 4 caused public uproar after he said gay marriage would shame the United Kingdom. George Berridge reports. Charlie and Emma are a couple from Winchester who support marriage equality and I spoke to them about the cardinal's views and the potential reaction of the gay community if same-sex marriage remains illegal. Uh, it'd be uproar. It'd I think there'd be protests, there'd be petitions, there'd be riots, that it would not be pretty. Calling it grotesque is ridiculous. Same-sex marriage is one of the most controversial issues facing both the church and the state, with fierce argument from both sides. The government are this month launching a public consultation asking whether it should be introduced in England and Wales. Cardinal Keith O'Brien's article in the Daily Telegraph has sparked outrage as he compared the idea of same-sex marriage to the slave trade and called it grotesque. Though petitions for marriage equality have been gaining speed, the Catholic Church still believed the traditional view of marriage should remain. A change in the law would change society's understanding of marriage and would move it away from my understanding of it as a Catholic. Since our understanding of marriage underpins our teaching on marital and family life and sexual ethics, such a change would bring about a moral change which I would not see as good. Though marriage between same-sex couples is still illegal in the United Kingdom, other countries in the European Union, such as Portugal, Spain and Norway, have changed their laws to adopt the rights of all couples to marry. David Cameron said that he emphatically agreed with the change. It seems now the question is rather a when as opposed to an if. This is George Berridge. Winchester News Online, Winchester. 
The University of Winchester is to offer students a degree course in air traffic controlling. The degree will consist of business studies combined with placements at the National Air Traffic Services Training Base located in Hampshire. Prospective students will have to pass psychometric tests to see whether they have the right attitude for the job. It's a real aircraft with real lives that are all depending on you making the right judgement. And now over to Rachel for the sport. Thank you, Nicola. Winchester City were looking for their ninth league win in a row on Saturday. The citizens have scored 16 goals in their last three games in all competitions and would have been looking to add this to their tally. Aaron Summers saw the action. Winchester City faced New Milton Town at the Denplan City ground on Saturday, hoping to maintain their gap of nine points at the top of the Wessex Premier League. Manager Guy Butters stressed the importance of attacking early on and were given the opportunity to take the lead when New Milton Town's captain Darren Curtis was a judge to have pushed Andrew White. Jamie White made no mistake from 12 yards. But the referee's decision clearly angered the away bench. The lead did not last long. Good play from Harrison Jilks and the slack Winchester defending allowed the redeemed Curtis to head in the equaliser. The goal clearly delighted the defender, running half the length of the pitch bearing the name of his newborn daughter on his vest. Butters was bemused by the quick equaliser. With minds drawn to rivals Bermonton in their game, Winchester pushed for another goal early on in the second half. McClory Cuthbertson's cross gave Dominic Allen the chance to score his first goal of the game. City were then given a second penalty when the referee deemed the ball had hit a defender's hand. Jamie White clinically hit the roof of the net. The talisman striker then secured his hat-trick on 70 minutes with his 40th league goal of the season. Mark Lilly came on in the latter stages and 30 seconds later added his name to the score sheet. In the end, Winchester recorded a resounding 5-1 victory and maintained their lead at the top. This is Aaron Summers for Winchester News Online. Eastleigh were up against Farnborough Town at the weekend and with the away side recently being deducted five points, they were in desperate need of a win. After an uneventful first half, the game's turning point came when the referee awarded the visitors a penalty for this challenge. Philip Page stepping up to tuck away the spot kick. Eastleigh worked hard to try and get back into the game, but Farnborough weathered the storm to come away with a 1-0 win. Eastleigh have now dropped down three places in ninth in the Blue Square South. In ice hockey, the Basingstoke Bison's playoff dream was slowly fading after some inconsistent form, but a win over the Slough Jets could reignite that hope. Henry Lewin Tit was at the Planet Ice Arena to see if the Bison could end a run of two defeats in a row. The Basingstoke Bison were good spirits before they played the Slough Jets, with several players returning to the roster. The Bison stretched out an early two-goal lead, the second a solo effort from Chris Wiggins. The Jets halved the lead with Aaron Connolly's goal. The Jets then drew level, thanks to a well-placed shot from Shepard. Man of the match for the Jets, Aaron Connolly, then gave them the lead. Captain Nicky Chin equalised for the Bison, putting his team back in the game. Poor clearance let Dave Cloutman far home his shot. The Jets then extended the league when Connolly completed his hat trick. Davies fired home at close range to extend the Jets' lead. Things boiled over on the ice when Chris Wiggins pummeled a slow player up against the glass. The game was rounded out by Daniel Puskalkas, who scored two final goals to end the game 3-8. This five-goal defeat has rounded off a bad spell for the Bison, who have now lost three games in a row. Henry Lewintip, Winchester News Online. That's all for sport. Back to Nicola. Thanks, Rachel. A Hampshire student's dubstep remix of an indie pop track has made its way onto a famous Manchester duo's new album. The Ting Ting's latest release, Sounds from Nowheresville, was released in the UK last week. When you listen to an album, you'd be forgiven for thinking that all the mixes have been done by well-established DJs. But not in the case of Mike Carroll, a student from Southampton Solent Uni, who recently got his lucky break 
after entering a Sony Music competition. Pretty flabbergasted, I suppose. Like, I've entered quite a few competitions before and never hear anything back, so it was pretty intense. And I thought it was one of my mates taking the mic, if I'm honest. Mike, who mixes under the alias Inertia, beat off hundreds of hopefuls with his dubstep remix of the Ting Ting's Hang It Up. What started off as a challenge from his friends soon became a success. But for now, Mike's back in the studio working on his degree and new material with a little help. Hetty Malam, Winchester News Online, Southampton. That's all from us this week. But for more award-winning news and sport, go to winall.co.uk. Thank you and goodbye.